please stand. And let's center our hearts and minds on worship of Almighty God. Spirit Anglican Church. It's good to have you with us, those of you here and those of you joining us at home on this first Sunday of Lent. It's a solemn time of the church here that gives us an opportunity for self-examination, spiritual growth, and trying to draw closer to Christ through spiritual disciplines. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the great commandment and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Join me in the Gloria and Excelsis. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of God's Word. Nine, verses 8 through 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. It is for every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. 
And God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is from Psalm 25. We will read responsively by half verse, beginning with verse 3. Show me your ways, O Lord. And teach me your paths. Lead me forth in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation, and you has been my hope all the day long. Call to remembrance, O Lord, your tender mercies. And your loving kindnesses to have been from of old. O remember not the sins and offenses of my youth. But according to your mercy, think on me, O Lord, in your goodness. Gracious and righteous is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. Those who are meek shall he guide in judgment. And those who are gentle shall he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. To those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our New Testament reading today is from 1 Peter, chapter 3, verses 18 through 22. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through the water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. Praise God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of today's gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove and a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals and the angels were ministering to him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. You may be seated.
Have you ever talked with someone who's talking too fast and leaving out a lot of details and you say something to them like, slow down, can you tell me more? To be honest, I've heard that from people more than a few times. That might be how you would react if you were talking with John Mark, the author of Mark's Gospel. The Gospel according to St. Mark is fast moving and to the point. Depending on the translation you use, you see words like immediately, straightway, right away. The action moves. St. Mark seldom gives a lot of detail. If you compare him with the other Gospels, nearly always his accounts are shorter, more crisp, terse, like I said, right to the point. In today's Gospel reading, the narrative of the baptism and temptation of Jesus, honestly, reads like a divinely inspired Reader's Digest version. It's very much just the facts, right to the point. And the temptation we face is to pull out the other gospel accounts to fill in the gaps. We, we preachers do that all the time with Mark. And there's a time and place to do that. But the gospel of St. Mark is inspired by the Holy Spirit just as it is. It wasn't just Mark's personality coming across. God shaped that personality and brought out the gospel through Mark the way that he wanted it. And sometimes we need to take Mark on his own terms and hear his gospel as it is. Very likely, Mark was the first gospel written. The first people who read it or heard it read to them didn't have Matthew and Luke and John to refer to. Mark was all that they had. Perhaps they also had some verbal stories that they had heard, but the only inspired written record that they had at that time as far as a gospel was the gospel of Mark. So this morning, I'm going to restrain myself as much as possible to preach from this simple, beautiful account given to us by God through a believer named Mark. Our gospel reading begins with a quick report of Jesus being baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist. And several weeks back, I think about six weeks ago, the baptism of Christ was the focus of our message. And today, we're just going to look at it quickly to get the context. Verse 10 tells us that immediately as he was baptized, Jesus came out of the water. The heavens were ripped open. The Spirit comes down on Jesus like a dove. And a voice from heaven, God the Father, speaks saying, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. What a scene. We see each person of the Holy Trinity in action. And as always in Mark, action is the key. Yet Jesus is the focus. In baptizing Jesus, John has completed his role of, as the forerunner preparing for the Messiah. And this opens the door for the divine stamp of approval upon the Messiah by God the Spirit and God the Father. And the Spirit beautifully descends. And the Father powerfully speaks. Then things get weird. It's strange. Verse 12 says, the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. Did you ever catch that? I had ran over that for years before it was emphasized to me in a commentary that I was reading. The Spirit drove him into the wilderness. The New Living Translation says that once the Spirit compelled Jesus to go into the wilderness. John Wesley translated, immediately the Spirit thrusteth him out into the wilderness. The message paraphrases it like this. At once the same spirit pushed Jesus out into the wild. Compelling, thrusting, pushing. That's powerful phrasing. As Jesus was baptized and the spirit descended upon him and the father spoke, suddenly inside him something just burst. The Holy Spirit. Not pushing him to go and preach. First, pushing him to go into the wilderness for a time of trial and testing. The same Greek wording is used to describe demons being cast out. The word for drove him, or thrusting him, is ekbalo. That's the word for casting out demons. It's not that Jesus was unwilling to go into the wilderness, but the powerful phrasing emphasizes how strong the working of the Holy Spirit in Jesus was, compelling him, pushing him toward going into the wilderness for this time of temptation. It was essential that the second Adam would begin his ministry as Messiah by facing temptation directly from the evil one 
as the first Adam had. One commentator writes, With the wild beast contrast the theater where Christ won the victory over Satan with the beautiful garden where Satan won the victory over the first Adam. Adam had everything going for him. He had all the food that he could desire in a beautiful garden with wonderful human companionship made exactly for him. Christ was in a wilderness, a dry place, fasting, hungry, alone, with only wild beasts there with him. And Adam lost the battle in a perfect environment, but Christ won it in such an imperfect environment. In the midst of the beautiful imagery and theology, don't miss that strange reality that the Spirit powerfully led Jesus into a dry, dangerous place where he would face temptation. You see, that same Spirit sometimes takes us to some dry, dangerous places that are full of apparent dangers to our bodies, finances, families, and even our souls. Facing want, pain, loneliness, and temptation do not necessarily mean you are out of God's will. Even serious sickness, even the loss of a loved one, these things do not necessarily mean you're out of God's will. They may be where the Spirit is compelling you to go for a time of testing. In fact, God's providential ordering of our lives sometimes results in times of great spiritual blessing being followed by times of tremendous challenge. Make a note in your mind that the dry times are part of the process of spiritual growth. They're not an aberration. They don't mean you're off track. It's just part of the process. No one less than John Wesley, the Anglican priest who started the Methodist movement, Wrote, so in all the children of God, extraordinary manifestations of his favor are wont to be followed by extraordinary temptations. Another writer wrote, just after his baptism, with the glow of the descended spirit still upon him, and the commanding voice of the Father still ringing in his ears, Jesus is rushed into the suffering of temptation. Thus abrupt and violent are the changes of life. The spiritually exalted may expect these sharp contrasts, after being in the third heaven, Paul had a messenger of Satan to buffet him. And remember, the prophet Elijah, after winning a great victory over 400 prophets of Baal, then ran in fear of his life from Queen Jezebel. And shortly after that, he prayed that he might die. Elijah prayed for God to take his life. I've heard many pastors admit that after preaching and leading on a Sunday morning with the hand of God on them, Sunday afternoon can be a low, dangerous time. And I've been there too many times myself. Be on guard after any spiritual victory. Because often God's going to allow it to be a time of testing. I sometimes wonder if the point of the spiritual high isn't to prepare us to face the low. Robertson wisely points out the 40 days in the wilderness were under the direct guidance of the Holy Spirit. The entire life of Jesus was bound up with the Holy Spirit from his birth to his death and resurrection. Again, the dry times are part of the process, a normal part of the spiritual life. The time of Messiah was prophesied to be a time of a new working of the Spirit of God. And Jesus ushered in this new age of the Holy Spirit. Listen to Acts 10, verses 37 and 38. The apostle Peter was preaching in the house of Cornelius. And he said, You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. One of the important lessons of our Lord's baptism and time in the wilderness is our need for the Holy Spirit. The eternal Son of God in human flesh did not begin his ministry until the Spirit came down upon him. We cannot overcome temptation without the work of the Holy Spirit. We can't overcome our own weakness, the pressing of our own flesh, without the work of the Spirit. Lent, as I said on Wednesday evening, is not a self-improvement project. 
It's a time to draw near to God, to look in the spiritual mirror, which is the Word of God, see your weakness, see your failings, and lay them at the feet of the cross, crying out for the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon you and transform you. We cannot know the will of God unless we seek and listen to the Spirit. We cannot minister effectively unless we learn to listen to and depend upon that same Holy Spirit that came upon Jesus at his baptism and thrust him into the wilderness. Everything we do as a church, everything you do as a Christ follower, must be saturated in prayer for the Spirit to lead and power to bless. In this Lenten season, will you join me in praying every day for God to fill me, Kay, and all of your great lay leaders with more and more of his Holy Spirit? I need your prayers. Pray for the music ministry, for our greeters, the sound and projection people, all to have a touch of the Holy Spirit. There is nothing that is too mundane to not need the touch of the Holy Spirit. Pray for yourself and your fellow parts of this church. Every part of the body is essential. Every part of the body of Christ needs the oil of the Holy Spirit. There's lots of things we need to do to be doing an effective ministry. And it takes all the parts working together in the power of the Spirit. Because those things done without that touch are empty and hollow and powerless. And that blessing requires prayer and fasting of some kind. Some people can't fast from food because of health reasons. But there's other ways to fast. Would it be meddling to say, turn off your Facebook? <laughs> Would it be meddling to say, shut the TV off? At least earlier? No. To, instead of watching your favorite program, and here I have to start being careful, the Spirit might speak to me too. <laughs> Spend that time reading. Praying. It takes fasting of some kind. Do it and find the power of God through it. Now in Mark 1.13, this passage ends with hope. The verse says, And he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. The Spirit thrust him into a hard, dangerous place. Can you imagine going 40 days without food and then Satan coming and tempted you to do a miracle you're able to do but God didn't want you to do to turn a stone into bread? Mark doesn't tell us that, but the others do. That was a temptation. It was hard. And when it was all done, Christ had to be exhausted. And God sent angels to minister to him. The Father provided help for his son during the time of testing. And he will always provide help for you and me during our time of trusting also, testing also. There's angels in this room right now. I believe everywhere that a believer goes, there's at least one angel there watching for us. God sends his angels to minister to us at our time of need also. How long was Jesus in the wilderness? 40 days and 40 nights. How many days do we practice Lent? Forty days. I cannot preach this text on the first Sunday of Lent without mentioning that the narratives of our Lord fasting in the wilderness and being tempted for 40 days is a primary biblical foundation for our practice of Lent, which the church started very early in our history. Just as Jesus waited for baptism and the anointing of the Spirit before starting his ministry, we also need to get alone and fast and pray before we launch into doing work for him. If the Son of God could not start his ministry without a time of fasting and prayer and self-examination, don't you and I need periodic times like that to stay usable by the Lord? We are not Jesus. And I think this is one of the primary reasons that for centuries the church has done Lent leading up to Easter. A time to make our hearts ready to celebrate our Lord's resurrection and to keep our heart renewed and usable for God to touch lepers and prostitutes and sinners and self-righteous church people and self-righteous atheists through humble, broken, but spirit-filled vessels. And it's good to do it periodically because we need renewal. We leak. 
And it's good to have a pattern like we do in, in liturgical churches because without a pattern, sometimes we let important things slip. Let's do a good Holy Lent together. Let's pray for the Spirit to come down on us like He came down on Jesus. But be warned, the same Spirit that blesses you, exalts you, thrills you, might just drive you, compel you, push you into a wilderness and a time of testing for a time of spiritual formation. The dry times are part of the process. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. this pandemic goes on long enough, I think we'll have a new copy of the Book of Common Prayer where the rubrics include priest takes off his mask, priest puts his mask back on. But we hope it doesn't go that long. Would you stand with me, please, and let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead in the life everlasting. Amen. Hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Foley, our Archbishop, and Neil, our Bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially our President, Joe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any adversity,
I'm sorry, I don't have the list. But we pray for all of them. And I Amen. add my Aunt Sarah. Amen. Any others? Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection. Especially. Mm. Amen. Sarah. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight to do your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. And share the sign of peace with one another, standing in place, and peace to those of you joining us at home and to all that are here. Have a couple quick announcements. Uh, for those of you that are here, the new issue of our daily bread is available on the table and back. Uh, we also have one copy of the Lenten study book back there. There are others on order, so if you need one, don't be bashful. Go ahead and take that one. And uh, there, there will be more in probably by the middle of the week. And our Lenten Bible study begins this Wednesday. We're doing it live and live on Facebook at 6.30 Wednesdays from, from the 24th of February through the 24th of March. I'm not sure that date's correct. Check that. But it's Wednesday and then on Thursdays at 11 o'clock, we, we are doing the Zoom meeting. We, we have a time for it. It's going to be Thursdays at 11. And if you haven't signed up for it yet, but you want to participate in that, uh, somehow get your email to me and let me know. We'll be emailing out the connection that, that you'll need to join the meeting. We're not making it public because we don't want people getting on that shouldn't be because that's happened sometimes with some inappropriate results. So to protect you, we're keeping the connection to the Zoom meet, meeting private, but contact me whether you're here in Mobile or elsewhere and be glad to send you that link so we can all be in Thursdays at, at 11. So we'll be doing the Bible study Wednesdays here at 6.30 and on Zoom Thursdays at, at 11. And we're doing Lent with the Desert Fathers. Like I said, we have one book available, more coming, or you can get it from Amazon or the Kindle version is also available from Amazon. Uh, looking at the ministry schedule, we need acolytes. We are shorthanded and having to overwork the few that are volunteering. So if you're willing to serve as an acolyte, please let us know, let me know, or let Gloria know, and we'll get you on the schedule and also give you some training if you've never done it before. Be sure to read about morning prayer and our Wednesday morning Bible study led by Al at Al's house is ongoing through Lent also because there's no, no conflict between the two really. Any other announcements need to be made? 
Now, an important part of church liturgy that comes up the first Sunday of Lent is the exhortation. And I'm going to share that with you, and I encourage you to really listen. This is important spiritual stuff that is really put right to the point. Dearly beloved in the Lord, if you intend to come to the Holy Communion of the Body and Blood of our Savior Jesus Christ, you must consider how St. Paul, in his first letter to the Corinthians, exhorts us all diligently to examine ourselves before we presume to eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For as the benefit is great if we receive the Holy Sacrament with a truly penitent heart and lively faith, spiritually eating the flesh of Christ and drinking his blood, so that we might be made one with Christ and he with us, so also is the danger great if we receive these gifts unworthily. For then we become guilty of profaning the body and blood of Christ our Savior, and we eat and drink to our own condemnation. Therefore judge yourselves, lest you be judged by the Lord. First examine your life by the rule of God's commandments. Wherever you have offended, either by thought, word, or deed, confess your sins to Almighty God with the full intention to amend your life. Be ready to make restitution for all injuries and wrongs you have done to others, and also be ready to forgive others who have offended you. For otherwise, if you unworthily receive the Holy Communion, you will increase your own condemnation. Therefore, repent of your sins, or else do not come to God's holy table. If you come here today with a troubled conscience and you need help and counsel, come to me or find some other priest and confess your sins that you may receive godly counsel, direction, and absolution. To do so will both satisfy your conscience and remove any scruples or doubt. Above all, each of us should give humble and hearty thanks to God for the redemption of the world by the death and passion of our Savior Jesus Christ. He humbled himself even to death on a cross for us sinners who lay in danger, in darkness, and in the shadow of death, that he might make us children of God and exalt us to everlasting life. Because of his exceedingly great love for us, our Savior Jesus Christ has instituted and ordained these holy mysteries as pledges of his love and for a continual remembrance of his death and passion to our great and endless comfort. To him, therefore, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, let us give continual thanks is it our duty and our joy, submitting ourselves entirely to his holy will and striving to serve him in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. Amen. And remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ that it's more blessed to give than to receive. And please come and share your gifts.
Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in the works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering in death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory. That we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him so that he may dwell in us and we in him and bring us with all your saints into the fullness of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask for your son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, 
We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Serving to come first, then after that those from the back come up by, by family groups and by faith receive the grace of God. The body and blood of Christ. The body and blood of Christ. The body and blood of Christ. Father God, I pray that you will bless these ladies, fill them with your spirit, and use them that your life might flow to others. In Christ's name, amen.
invite those of you at home that are unable to share Holy Communion with us physically to join with me in the prayer for spiritual communion. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you, together with all your faithful people, gathered around every altar of your church. And I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. Peace to love and serve the Lord.